What's up, Justin? What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming out today. We appreciate it. Who's got the first question? Dana, I know earlier this week you said that this fight was tracking as one of the biggest fights of all time. I'm curious if we could get an update on, on how things look. And if you could say what you think it is about this fight. You know, normally when you fight abroad, you, you lose some revenue, right, because you lose some attention. So, so how is it tracking, and what is yeah. it about this one that's making it special? Well, obviously it's, what is it, 6 in the morning there right now, so we don't, I don't have any updates today. But I will around, you know, noon, 1 o'clock on the West Coast. But the reality is this. I mean, apparently, <laughs> apparently people in the business don't know this, but uh, Habib is one of the biggest stars in all of sports, not just the UFC. Take this, hold on. I'm having mic issues. He's one of the biggest uh, stars in the sport. Um, you know, I, I, I actually, I knew somebody was going to ask me this today. And uh, Khabib's uh, videos have generated 222 million views. Um, his content that features him, over 100 million video views this year alone, just on Facebook. Um, let me point out some of these, uh, on, 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 uh, he's broken records on Instagram. I mean, I could just rattle off numbers all day here. He's the number one, by far the number one most played character in the video game globally, like by a, by a long shot. Um, and, and the numbers just go on and on. I, I could go on for days, but the kids broke a lot of records. And what makes this fight so big is that people believe that this kid has the style to beat him. So you have all the ingredients for a massive fight. You have a big superstar, and you have a kid who's coming off an incredible uh, uh, win o over a highly respected fighter, and many people believe that he has the style to do it. Yeah. And Dana, can I ask you as a promoter, I mean, is there anything exciting, refreshing, uh, I guess fun about a fight of this magnitude that isn't about guys that hate each other? It's not about, you know, bad blood or rivalry. It's just the two baddest dudes on the planet getting ready to get in there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is th th these come together every once in a while. It's not one of these these fights where these two need to scream at each other and do all this stuff. Um, you know, people know who both of these guys are. They know what they're both capable of, and that's why this fight is so big. Um, you know, right now th this thing yesterday when I had uh, when I had done some media yesterday, this thing was by far tracking to be the biggest fight we've ever done. Now, as we get into, you know, Thursday and Friday and, 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 and pre-buys and things like that start to come in, I, I don't know. We'll see. But that's a damn good place to start on, on Monday and Tuesday. I'll take it. But, uh, Habib, I wanted to ask you, as Dana said, you're a big global superstar. But here, I feel like the expectations, you know, the pressure might even be more. I know how much you love being here in Abu Dhabi and the UAE, but is it more difficult to be here because – the expectations, the time, the attention that you get here makes it more difficult to compete than maybe in Las Vegas. Mm, what's up, guys? Mm, yes, of course, it's a little bit difficult. It's always difficult when you have fight, when you have cut weight, when you have so much pressure on your on your shoulder. You know, it's always difficult. It's never been it's like easy. You know, and right now it's like special time for me. Uh, fighting here in Abu Dhabi with all this pandemic stuff, with all this, like, without crowd, without fans, and I think it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. Clearly, this would be a huge win for you in your career. It's a big fight. Um, we know that 30-0 mark is out there for you. We don't know who it might be, but if you win this fight and the 30-0 is on the line, when would you like to have that next fight? Do you have a, a date plan that you think that's when I'd like to, to go for 30-0? Honestly, I don't like this word, if, you know, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. And I'm focused on Justin Gaethje this Saturday night. And uh, what UFC have after this fight, I think you guys have to ask this guy. Because he, mm, you know, he called us and uh, then we talk about fights. What's going to happen after, I don't know. Right now, I'm focused on Justin Gaethje. Very nice. For Justin, if I could, please. When we were talking to Habib earlier, uh, he mentioned that he thought he could wear you down. Rounds three and four it might be a good time to finish you. Are you surprised to hear him say that he thinks he can wear you down based on your track record, your history of pace and of exciting fights? No, I know he's uh, you know, ultimately confident in what he does. He's done it 28 times. So um, 
you know, I expect him to believe that that's going to happen. I've been telling myself that's going to happen, as a matter of fact. And that's what drives me every single day. Um, on, I'm, a perf I'm a performer. Um, I always show up under the lights. Um, and, I, you know, that's what I do. I've been doing this as long as he has. We've been, this is ingrained in us. And on Saturday night, I will, you know, leave everything, give everything, and, you know, be proud of my performance. And last thing for me, Justin, I feel like in most of Habib's fights, you know, we can see his opponent kind of a moment that that person breaks, that that person realizes like, man, this dude's different. He's 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 special. Have you ever been in a position like that where you were tested and you thought, man, this guy might break me? And, and if so, how do you get through that in a fight? Uh, never in actual competition, but in, in practice, that's happened many times. Um my rule is I quit or you quit every single time I go to practice. Um, you know, it, whether we're best friends or, you know, enemies, uh, I'm, I'm here to get better. And that's what every practice is for for me. Um, again, I've been telling myself that's going to happen. And, you know, I can't wait to surprise myself again. Dana, obviously your excitement for this fight must be off the charts. But how do you actually see it playing out when they're inside the octagon? How does the fight go? I, I don't know. That, that's another thing that makes this, this fight so uh, exciting. I mean, you, 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 you think you know what he's going to do, and you're pretty sure you think you know what he's going to do, but when they get in there, anything is possible. Again, one of the things that, that, that makes this fight so fun and so exciting and so interesting um, to the world. I know we've had some guarantees in the past, and it's not something you necessarily want to do all the time, but can you guarantee this is going to be a fantastic fight? Tell me the last fight he was in that sucked. I guarantee it. Yeah, when was the last fight he was in that sucked? It just doesn't exist, you know what I mean? And, and, and I can't, I, I don't have the numbers. I, I, I completely forgot about that one. But what has he lost? Has he lost two rounds in his entire career? He's undefeated, right? But how many rounds has he lost in, in fights? Just one. Four? I'd say zero, but they say one. One? Yeah, they say one. Yeah, so, you know what I mean? Habib is, is looking down the barrel of, you know, not only the greatest to ever do it in, in this division, but he's, he's look, I, listen, I think if he beats, if he beats Justin on Saturday, he's, he's the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, and uh, he's, he's on his way to GOAT status. And, and like he said, he doesn't say if, you know, how long he's going to stick around and how many more of these he's going to do, but... Um, pretty impressive what this guy has done to be sitting here I mean I you know what I think of John Jones and we always talk about what, what John's accomplished in his career look at how many fights this guy has and he's still undefeated and this is a nasty nasty weight division for Justin I was thinking when you look at Khabib's past fights is there a consistent mistake his opponents always make or is it just that he's good enough to overcome whatever they have planned you know, I'd, uh, I didn't watch any tape on Khabib. This, you know, I've watched his fights throughout his career because I'm a huge fan of MMA, but I didn't go back when I got him as an opponent to, to analyze him. I've always focused on being the, my best self. Um, I've, again, I've worked as long. You know, he hasn't wrestled or uh, fought somebody that has wrestled or grappled as long as he has. That is me. I have. Um, everyone says, you know, they're ready. I will not allow him to put me on the fence. You know, and if I do, then uh, I'm screwed. So my game plan is to, if he wants to grapple, let's grapple in the middle. And at all times, I will be, you know, said it a thousand times, I cause damage. You know, I have dense bones, and, you know, I'm going to kick his legs. That's where it's going to start, and then we're going to move on from there. And for Habib, Justin just mentioned his wrestling. I was curious, for the uninitiated, what's the difference between the wrestling you possess and the wrestling that a traditional American D1 wrestler possesses? <laughs> I think is uh, you supposed to ask me what difference between Dagestan wrestling and ra American wrestling. This is a good question. I think uh, it's big difference, and uh, I know he know how to wrestle. But uh, what about wrestling 25 minutes? It's gonna be like I told DC today. Like when you fight with Stipe Miocic last time. You grab his leg one time and you take him down and he get up very quickly and that's it. And you finish. And uh, other minutes all going stand up. But between me and DC is big difference. And uh, if, I t if I'm going to try to take him down once and he's going to defend his goods, I'm going to try. I'm going to go all night, you know. I'm going to go all night. This is big, big difference between U.S. wrestling and Dagestan wrestling. And then 
when it comes to Justin Gaethje, what does he do specifically for your legacy that your previous opponents have not done? Uh, he finished a lot of opponents, you know, a lot of great guys. And uh, he finished all of them. And he's, uh, he was a great champion in other organizations before UFC. Right now he champion in UFC interim champ. He beat Tony Ferguson, you know. I think he... Mm, I think... Uh, Beat a guy like Justin Gage is going to be big for my legacy. And the last thing from me, we, you know, we've heard from Justin say he causes damage and a lot's been made of his mindset leading into this fight. Do you believe Justin Gaethje has a unique attitude towards fighting? Yes, you know, he, he be, when he fight, he always, he beginning very fast, you know, like first round is very dangerous. It's very dangerous. I think him and the corner is two most dangerous guys in first round. But if you talk about if you talk about second round, third round, uh, they become like a little bit regular fighters. Justin, right here. Uh, you've openly spoke about uh, wanting to represent the United States coming over here against Habib. Given that the Olympics have been postponed, does that make this fight any bigger in your mind? Considering we don't get many sports between countries right now. I don't think it's bigger, but, you know, this is an individual sport. It's such a different sport than most, than all, than all sports, you know, and not so much, or representing the United States is special. I never thought a kid from Safford, Arizona would be able to have this opportunity, especially halfway across the world in Abu Dhabi. Look how beautiful this place is. I've never, never been to a place like this before. I'm not even supposed to be here. Uh, this is supposed to be Tony Ferguson. Thank God I got that opportunity, and I, and I took it from him. I took his soul, and now um, it's... Again, I perform. When, I, when I'm under those lights, it's just what I do. It's, it's ingrained in both of us. We will both go out there and we will fight for our lives. Um, it's who we are. So, yeah, it's, um, this is huge. Huge for me, huge for my family, huge for my country, huge for the small town of Safford, Arizona. You know, I'm so proud of that. Uh, same question for Habib. Does it mean anything to be representing a country with no Olympics right now, or do you just view it as an individual sport between competitors? I think, like, for me, it's nothing changed, you know. For me, it's not ch nothing, nothing changed. He is, my opponent is a very tough guy. He know how to wrestle, he know how to kick, he know how to punch, you know. He is like completely MMA fighter and he is interim champ, very big name. Like, uh, I never think about like when I fight with someone, I fight with all, with all his country. I think for fans, maybe. For fans, it's gonna be like this, maybe. And then you've obviously faced a lot of great strikers in the past, like Ed Exxon Barbosa, Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor. How does Justin's striking compare to those, considering most of the narrative is between wrestling? What do you make of his striking? Uh, I think he have dynamite on his uh, hands. Very good uh, kick. Uh, he have very good kick. Like uh, They all good. They all good when they stand up. But uh, when I grab them... Uh, it's uh, changed a little bit, you know, and uh, I think more than Dustin and uh, Connor and other guys, he know how to wrestle. It's gonna be a little bit hard, but I prepare myself to try to take him down 100 times. It's gonna be very interesting Saturday night. And same question for Justin. Uh, what do you make of Habib's strike? And we don't see a lot of it. I know you said you don't watch tapes, but given the fights that you have seen of his, does his striking compare to anyone else? You've Be seen? careful with my jab, brother. I have a good jab. <laughs> he has a lot of good things. Everything is unorthodox, um, you know, and um, at different times. Uh, everything in there is timing. Timing and space is the most important factors when you're in a fight. Um, and I believe, you know, he's world class in, in, that, in that regard. Um, I don't, doesn't sound like he's planning on striking much. He said 25 minutes on the ground. So, you know, we'll see how much of that we see. Justin Gaethje right here. Um, Justin, we saw on the Embedded that you were able to bring your parents over to Abu Dhabi. I mean, that's a long flight. This is a whole big trip. Just, I guess, mentally, what difference does it make having them here physically with you? You know, uh, my parents have never been interna flown international. They got to fly business class. They've never flown business class. Um, you know, my dad retired a little bit over a year ago. He worked 37 years in a copper mine. My mom is still in the, you know, she's going to retire after the, If this fight starts, if that bell rings at the beginning, then I will secure that she will retire after this fight. And uh, she's been there for, I think, 35 years. They've never had a chance to flown international, fly international. Every... Um, Every piece of money they had, it went into me. 
and my brother and my sister giving me the opportunities. You know, we uh, were two hours from any city. Going uh, school clothes shopping was a vacation for us. We would get up and we would go to wrestling tournaments. We had to drive two, three hours. Sometimes we had to stay the night, and they financially took, you know, hits every single time that we did that. And uh, you know, nothing is, nothing is better on earth than being able to repay that. And that's, uh, you know, for them to be here, it doesn't. Uh, when I step in that octagon. Nothing matters. Um, they're not there. My coach, Trevor Whitman, is there. That's the only voice that I could hear. And that's all that matters to me. But I'm very happy that they get to experience this. Habib, at an event that uh, honored your father, you spoke to the public and you said how important it was to be a great role model outside of competition. Um, outside of MMA, what are you most proud of that you've been able to contribute as you become a bigger celebrity and a star? Hmm. It's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. Uh, it's like, like most important thing for me is like uh, stay close with your family, with your friends, with your close people. It's like uh, because like famous money. Today you champion. Tomorrow everything can change. You know, and you never know what's gonna happen. Like most important thing for me, it's family. You know, I'm I'm so proud of. Uh, about this, uh, these uh, things, because uh, I think I was a good kid for my parents. Uh, on that note, uh, a lot of people were touched by the piece done by UFC on BT Sport, uh, animated, telling the story of you and your father. Just can you give us your thoughts on just that video? It's a great video. It's a great video. A lot of people send me this video. You know, it's a great video. I really like this. Dana, my last one for you. Uh, before, we were used to, you know, the big fight. It has to happen in Las Vegas. It's just how it's always been done. As you got a star like George St. Pierre, you made it clear that he does that great business in Canada, that that's where you're going to keep him. We know you signed a great deal with Abu Dhabi. Is Habib a guy that you would strictly keep on this side of the world, or do you see him going back to Vegas in the future? Well, the deal that we signed with Abu Dhabi was, was over the next five years, five fights in five years. And then the pandemic hit, and you know we were looking for a place to go, and thank God we ended up here. Um, but no, these, these fights can happen. As, if the world comes back to normal, these fights can happen anywhere. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm just looking at Saturday. I don't know what's going to happen in, 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 in the United States and the rest of the world uh, going into 2021, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you know we can get back to normal soon and start traveling around and having fans back. Would you say, you know, we're used to the world tour and things like that. Obviously, that's impossible right now. But would this fight have been one that maybe you take these guys around the world to build up the fight? I don't know. I mean, listen, this thing, if you look at you know, we we've been going like this through the whole pandemic. Our numbers continue to, to rise and, and we've been super successful throughout this thing. Um, I, I mean, I, I was just looking at this thing, too. UFC 254 total impressions is 23 billion. So w when you start talking about, what, well, how is this such a big fight? And it's just the, the world is, is not the same as it was eight months ago. Everything is completely different now. And, uh, you know, this is a massive fight that didn't even need a world tour to pull 23 billion impressions. It's questions for Justin Gaethje. A couple of weeks ago, Ali came on the Schmozone podcast and talked about a time that you helped Habib cut weight a couple of years ago for a UFC fight. Is there anything you learned in those intimate moments leading up to this moment that you have here to get the championship crown? Listen, I've been cutting weight my whole life. He's been cutting weight his whole life. There's nothing fun about it. So um, if I'm around and you're struggling, then I'm going to lend a helping hand. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, I just happened to be in the situation at the time, and uh, it's, it's who I am. It's, you know, nothing more than that. I didn't, I didn't go into the situation to learn about him or about his, you know, mindset. I was there to help, you know, because he needed some help at the time, just in that one minute. It's questions for Habib. You want to be known as the greatest of all time or one of the greatest of all times. So you have a lot of respect for the Mike Tysons, the Muhammad Ali's. What is there left in your career if you beat Justin Gaethje to prove for you to be in that conversation? Uh, like Muhammad Ali, he's on different level. I think it's like Mike Tyson is almost same level, but like personality, Muhammad Ali is like different level, you know. 
And for me, become like this, <laughs> I don't know. It's a very hard question, you know. When I grew up, I watched these guys, you know, these guys greatest. Uh, I don't know I can ever become close to these people. Uh, I didn't have like this goal, you know. I just want to win every my fights and uh, we'll see, we'll see on future because uh, I'm not finished yet everything what I have. Dana, how you doing mate? Hey. It's, uh, it's been an incredible five weeks here on Fight Island and it's something I'm gonna remember for the rest of my life. But I'm curious to know what the feeling is for you as we stand here on the beach, commencing one of the most epic events in possibly one of the most challenging times of our existence? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, yeah, I feel the same way I, I, I think that most of you do. I, I've said it many times, this was, uh, this was without a doubt the most challenging year of my career. And that's saying a lot if you consider where we came from, from the beginning when, when me and the Fertitas got involved in this thing. Um, but it's also been one of the most rewarding. Um, I think that for all of us, you know, my staff, the fighters, the media, and everyone else involved. This is one of the coolest things that we've ever done, and uh, I'll never forget it. Yeah, I'll never forget it. I ain't gonna lie. I'm ready to get home. <laughs> you know, it's 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 gonna be good to get home. But uh, this has been incredible. And if you got to be locked up in a bubble, this is the bubble you want to be in right here. So, yeah. Can I also ask you what your personal highlight has been outside of the fights? Um, yeah, I, I think the entire experience, I, I, I just, I don't think you can go anywhere in the world where you're going to get this kind of service, attention to detail. The people here have, have been, you know, when you think about the people that are all working here and taking care of us in this bubble, they've been here for a long time. They've been away from their families way longer than we have. And, uh, and this is their second stint here after the first fight island. So, uh, the, the, the attitude of the people here and the, it's just, there, there isn't, a bad experience through this entire thing, man. And if you need something or something's not right, these people take care of you. This is hospitality to another level. And uh, I can't thank them all enough. It's, it's, it's been an amazing experience. Awesome. Thank you for the opportunity as thank well. Thank you. Khabib, um, you're a man of loyalty, a man of passion, and a man of dignity. But what are some of the other things that you want people to remember you for when you retire from the sport of mixed martial arts? I don't know. When I'm retired, I just want to retire like undisputed, undefeated, UFC lightweight champion. And uh, here in sport, I have this goal. Without... Um, Without sport, without uh, octagon, honestly, I don't know. I have a lot of goals. I have a lot of goals, and uh, we'll see. Thank you. Justin, um, after UFC 244, um, Dustin mentioned that in, uh, well, during the aftermath that he felt like the away fighter. I'm curious to know, do you feel like you're on enemy turf here? You go back um, a couple years ago, I think uh, I said I wanted to go to you know Brazil and fight their best. I wanted to go to Ireland and fight their best, and I wanted to come to Russia and fight Khabib. That's um, the chaos, you know. Um, they don't wish, you know, they wish ill on you. They don't, they don't necessarily want you to to die or anything. But you know that hostility is what I thrive in, and I can't wait for there to be people back up. There was a hundred thousand people in there wanting me to die, you know. It would be fantastic. It would be such a great feeling. Thank you, my friend. All right, thank you, guys. We appreciate it. I'm going to square these guys off for photo ops. <laughs>